What's going on guys, it's Renjin, and welcome to episode 2 of my Java programming tutorial series. In today's episode, we're basically going to go into a little bit more detail of what I didn't fully explain in last episode, because I wanted to keep it pretty, pretty basic. But we're going to go over that, and as promised, I will explain in greater depth. And we're going to look at some variable types and how to use them in our program and how to apply them. So, first off, let's just start with public static void. Now, I already have my main method here. If you have the same code from yesterday, uh, basically all I did was delete the print statement. That's it, hello world. Uh, that's literally all I did, and I'm just left with what we had. So, public static void main. Now, main we went over. Main is pretty much just, you know, declaring that it's our main method. So, public public basically means that this method is visible and it's in the you know the actual term of the word as I'm sure everyone knows public you know it's it's visible by others you know what I'm saying and it's visible by other objects it can be called on by objects and it's not specific and not limited to this method here um, as well as there being the alternative of private, which obviously is the opposite, can't be called by other methods. And so that's pretty much it. Let's move on to static here. Static basically means that it's not associated with a certain object. It's actually associated with the class Hello World. Um, so basically what this means is we don't need to make an object say, you know, well, I don't even, I can't think of a good example right now, but maybe bicycle. We, we don't have to attach this method to the bicycle, like, I don't know, spin wheel, I guess, the spin wheel method for the bicycle. We don't have to attach this method to a certain object. We can just have it kind of floating around. It can be static. And void finally means that there's no return value. Uh, since we don't have a return value for this method, uh, we just go ahead and put void. If we did, say, like an integer, we would just put int instead of void. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our actual coding, I guess you could say. Um, let's go ahead and learn about some of these variables. So, first type of variable is an integer. Now, that's short for int, as in many programming languages, it's just int for integer. And let's say what do I, let's just call it stuff we're gonna call our variable stuff so the way that we call a variable here is the variable type and then the variable name followed by a semicolon so what we've done right here essentially is we've declared the variable stuff and we go hey there's an integer and it's gonna be called stuff and now what we can do in the next line is we can say stuff equals five all right and don't forget your semicolon and there we go so now we have an integer variable that it's called stuff and it equals 5. Now to show you this, I'm going to write a print statement and I'm going to print out stuff. Oops, grab the T. Alright, bada bing. So system.out.print line stuff. And let's go ahead and compile that. And then bada bing. Void main. Go ahead and run our program. Oops, <laughs> this is from before. I was messing around a little bit. But as you can see, it does print out 5. So now another thing that we could do is actually I would show you, you can also write all in the same line. So we can go int stuff um, equals, let's say, I don't know, stuff plus one. So this is going to kill kind of kill two birds with one stone here. I'm going to show you that you can do the same thing uh, or all of this on one line. And then you can also later in your program change this variable. So it can be stuff equals stuff plus one. And obviously, the program is going to run from top to bottom. So you'll see what happens here. Let's print out stuff again one more time. System dot out dot print line stuff. Oops. There we go. And bada bing. So let's compile that. Oop. What do we do? Oh, we already have it defined here. It's not going to like that. So we can't kill two birds with one stone. So we're going to say stuff equals stuff plus one. Um, since we already, basically what that just said is basically we already declared stuff as an integer, so we can't do that again. Oh, my bad there. Um, int, so let's just call another variable here. Int, um, what, should we, what should we call it? More stuff. We're going to call it more stuff. Equals mm, two. Okay. So system.out.println, system.out. Let's write another one print line more stuff 
which ironically is less than stuff. So let's go ahead and compile that. Go ahead and open up our project here. And then as you can see, uh, this stuff here was what I have highlighted is the old stuff. So it prints out five, and actually if I bring my code up here, actually, I'll, here we go, I'll have the terminal right next to the code. And basically what happens here is we have our variable stuff. It's declared as an integer. Stuff equals five, and then we print out stuff, and that here is the five, because stuff equals five. And then we declare the integer more stuff equals two. And as you can see right here, int stuff and stuff equals five is basically the same thing, obviously with a different variable stuff and more stuff. But it's the same thing on one line. So it is preference. A lot of times some people will have like say int blah 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 and then int blah 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 like this. And then they'll have the stuff or the I guess D O A S J I D I J A <laughs> We'll have this and then the number that it equals to. So they kind of organize it like this if you can kind of catch my drift here. Uh, I don't know if I explained that very well. But uh, maybe maybe you get it. I think you guys can catch on to that. But let's see here. Where was I? Okay. So. Uh, oh, yeah. So this was the same thing as. Oops. This needs to go up one more line. Boom. Okay. We're good. We're good to go. So this is the same thing as int more stuff equals two, and of course we say system out print ln is five. I think I already said this, but that is five, and then we add stuff equals stuff plus one to show you that we can then change the value of that variable, um, and we're just adding stuff plus one, which is five plus one, obviously equals six, and then we go ahead and we print out stuff, and that's where we actually get the sixth in the terminal window, and then system out print line more stuff gives us the two. Uh, some other variable types are double and hold on, I'm trying to get rid of, there we go, got rid of that. And we get the double, um, what should we call it? Um, what is that number equals 23.1, okay? Well, let's go ahead and system dot out dot print line double. Oh, wait, what one am I typing? Dat number. Dat number. And bada bing. Good to go. Yep, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and compile that. Run it one more time. And we're going to get the whole shebang. But there we go. 23.1. Now, what we are going to try to do here is change this to int. And I will show you what happens. Let's go ahead and compile it. And whoop possible loss of precision if you see down here required int found double right so it goes hey wait you said in here but this isn't an integer this is a double dude you need a double thing and then so you change that to double and you go ahead and compile it again and then we can continue as normal I already showed you what happened so boom 23.1 good to go and that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode I try to keep it nice and short and quick um, I don't know if I did a very good job about that. We're in uh, eight and a half minutes now. But um, that's going to be it for me. I thank you for watching episode two. I hope to be pretty consistent with this series. I know uh, some other things have fallen off. I've kind of kind of spent my, my Python tutorials out so far. So I don't know how many more of those will be coming in the future. I've kind of covered most of the basics. And from where you go from now in your Python career, I guess, is kind of up to you. Um, there are definitely some resources that I'm sure you can find out there. And I wish you the best of luck in learning that. But uh, I hope that you stay here with me for the Java tutorials as both you and I learn Java. I am also, of course, learning more about Java each day. And I hope that you will do the same by watching these tutorials. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for Episode 3. Thank you.